Hi everyone, welcome to another episode on Learn All Things Cyber with T. As I promised you that this week we'll be wrapping up the series on cryptography. And today I'll be showing you one general use case, how cryptography is connected to cryptocurrency. So stay tuned. So because I know that we have had previous two series on cryptography, I'll just be giving you a high level overview of what we have discussed before and how we are going to merge it into what I have planned to discuss today. So the plan is to discuss what we call the elliptic curve cryptography. And I'll tell you how the previous lesson match into this one and how this elliptic curve is what is mostly used when it comes to cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. So. You know, at the start of the lesson, we discussed that, you know, cryptography has like three different types of algorithm. We mentioned that hashing is there. We mentioned that symmetric encryption is there. And we mentioned the third part to be asymmetric encryption. Now, when I was discussing symmetric encryption, I mentioned that it's a single key kind of encryption where the sender and the receiver usually use one key to transfer information or file or data to one another. And then I mentioned that for asymmetric, you need a pair of key, the public and the private. And if you remember properly, I gave an example as um, um, under symmetric to be this advanced encryption type of you know example use case when it comes to symmetric and for asymmetric i am not sure i mentioned that elliptic curve cryptography is an example under asymmetric because there's a production of a pair of keys so we have what we call acc elliptic curve cryptography so what is elliptic curve cryptography? It's just a kind of mathematical trick that uses a curve that helps you to secure your data, lock and unlock your data. So I told you that this um, cryptography is connected to cryptocurrency. As I mentioned about elliptic curve cryptography, I mentioned that is one of the use case for asymmetric. Again, I didn't know if I mentioned that asymmetric could be referred to as PKI, usually call it public key. So whenever you hear something like public key, you know they are referring to asymmetric. And one of the examples is this elliptic curve cryptography. Now, this is how the curve itself looks like. As you can see that every point here actually points to an X, Y position. Say for example, for B, we know that the Y, X value is here and then the y value is here. So every point that is x and y actually follows the rule of this curve equation to eventually calculate it. I won't dive into it. It's a very complicated topic. People actually have to study something regarding algorithm and all the mathematical things regarding this curve. But let's say, for example, we have a private key that is just generated through these equations. Say, let's pick a random key called 7. Let's just say a random private key is 7. Now, to get the public key, every time you move in position around this curve, from this private key would be public equals to 7 multiplied by G. So, private multiplied by a generator. And this generator could be any number as you move in position on the curve. But it is not possible, if you don't have the private key, it is not possible for you to generate the public key from the... It's not possible for you to generate the private key from the public key. You need the public key first to be able to generate it. And every addition you make on this curve is called point addition. When you add more points to yourself, it's actually called point doubling. And when you do it multiple times, it's called scalar multiplication. This is a little bit complicated part of, um, you know, cryptography. I won't dive so much into it, but I just want you to know that they exist. There's something called elliptic curve cryptography. It follows this equation. The curve looks this way, and it takes some mathematical function in order to generate private key for you. And I would explain to you how this correlates to our day-to-day -day, um, use case when it comes to cryptocurrency. Like I said, I am trying to correlate our ECC, 
elliptic curve cryptography relates to cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin. Now, I'll take it step by step, one step at a time. Now, when you get like a Bitcoin wallet, when you try to create a Bitcoin wallet, the first thing that happens is that a private key is generated. That's the first thing that happens. You don't see this private key, right? You don't see it. Now, if for some wallets, they make it visible. For some, you don't see it. Now, not the normal traditional ones, you barely see it. I mean, for some of the wallets I have, you barely see it. Now, you generate this. And then, from this private key that is randomly generated for you, a public key is generated using ECC. Remember that formula I showed to you that you can use it to generate public key because you have the private key that is randomly generated to you. Now you have the public key. It is this public key that you send out to people. So, you know, when people are saying, oh, let me send you Bitcoin, send me your wallet address. You're sending out the public key for them to send money to you and it gets to you. Now, they send it. So, how does this translate? If I would explain it in simple terms. So, private key is like you have a pen. You have a pen. The pen is private to you. No one else can hone the pen. Now, public key is like saying your signature. You have used that pen to sign a signature. Now, everybody will see the signature you have signed, but you are the only person that holds the pen that can sign that signature. And this is how it relates to each other. So, you have your private key randomly generated when you create a wallet and then public key is actually generated using this mathematical function of elliptic curve cryptography and when it's done this is the address you send to people and they can send you money and how has you know crypto cryptography helped with you know bitcoin transaction back and forth it is to help with making sure that your transaction is secured you have ownership over your transaction and it's also a decentralized kind of, um, you know, transaction parts is not centralized towards, um, you know, a particular process. So in case you are wondering that, how does passphrase come into all of this? I know some of you have like 24 words passphrase that you use to secure your wallet. Now, you know, I explained that there's a private key and there's a public key. The public key is what you send out. This is a passphrase, right? Now, this passphrase, is what the wallet, um, you know, whoever it is, ownership, gives to you that whenever you have it, you can pull it, they generate the private key. So every transaction you do are actually signed off using your private key, even if it is not visible to you. They store it somewhere. So sometimes when it's as if you lost your application, whatever it is, they ask you for the passphrase. So when you impute the passphrase, they use it to generate your private key, which is not usually visible to you, in order for you to retrieve your wallet once again. Without the passphrase, you're not able to get this private key and you cannot have access back to your wallet. So this is how it works. So for example, let's say that you cannot you know, sign off a transaction, like they cannot even attest that you are the owner of that you know, wallet or something then you're not able to sign off. You're not able to send anything to anybody without the generation of your private key. And the private key, it's not the same. The passphrase is actually different from private key. What it just does is once you're putting your passphrase into the system, they are at the back end generating your private key to say, yes, this is the owner of the account because this is the only person that can have this private key. And that's it, how it works when it comes to, you know, Bitcoin wallets. I already gave you a background of how cryptography can actually fit into cryptocurrency. Now, I'll wrap it up with this part. You know, I was saying that is your private key actually visible to you when it comes to cryptocurrency? Now, it depends on the type of wallet that you're using. For some wallets, it is visible to you. For some, it is not visible to you. And I would also make mention of even some wallet that use something called keyless. They don't even use key anymore, like your private key. They use other means. So. Let's say, for example, the ones that make your private key visible to you. So let's say private key visible. So 
we have wallets like um, Bitcoin Core. Core. We have things like Electrum and even paper wallets. In this type of wallet, you actually see your private key. And what, what it means for you is that they give you the full control. They also give you the full responsibility, the full responsibility to keep it. Because if that private key gets into the hand of, you know, an alka or an attacker, they can actually move your fund. Say, for example, your passphrase actually gets into the hand of somebody that shouldn't have it. Now, I had this experience in the past. I think it was 2022 or 2023. Where you know at that point I didn't also I wasn't in two cyber security like cyber security has not been embedded into my personal life as all the time I was still like a beginner I was in the basic level and I stored some of my passphrase in my email address using the name they have okay so let's say you want to store it you could change the name and even if you change the name there's a way they can find it but you're not even supposed to store it online at all it's supposed to be offline kept safe and all of that so with your passphrase you see that it could use the passphrase to generate the private key and then get your money out i was seeing all of the alerts of the attacker removing my phone i lost a lot of money around the time so this is my own personal example and i'm saying that this is how risky a private key so when you have a private key just easy access for them once they get a private key from you they're able to move your fund and the system will recognize them as the owner of that you know cryptocurrency or bitcoin or whatever you're storing with and so some of these wallets actually make you see them and then some it is invisible so the ones that are invisible we have an example like a coinbase for people who are familiar with coinbase we have trust wallets for those who are very familiar with i'm quite familiar with trust wallet so for those who are familiar with trust wallet so this only gives you the passphrase that backs up your private key it doesn't give you the private key it gives you the seed or the passphrase some call it seed like 12 seed or 24 seed or passphrase that helps you to back your private key so in this case it's a little bit mild because maybe not exactly because if the person also gets your passphrase they are able to have control over your phone so these are like you know cases where it is visible or invisible now let's move also to traditional wallet and keyless wallet i mean i'm just calling it this way okay again traditional wallets will be using the private key so you know the ones i mentioned before all of them are using the private key some it is visible to the end user some it is not visible to the end user but end user so but in this case where it is keyless is the newest technology that you know um all of these wallets and um, you know uh, whatever companies are using now they don't actually need a key so an example i will give is for people who use binance so binance wallets right now is using something called keyless so the keyless means that they can use something like your biometric to get you into your account so no one else would have the same biometric like you they can use something like you know secure hardware models in order to secure your fund and make sure you are the one you know using the fund instead of using key because they also believe that if an attacker lay hand on your key they will be able to move your fund so i think i've been able to do justice to the topic if there's any more topic that i did not cover in cryptography please put it in the comment section below and i'll walk through it Thank you and see you next time.